Uh, so, welcome everyone on today's CI CD team update. Uh, let's maybe start with uh, accom accomplishments. This is always the these, uh, the most happy part of, of the like presentation of uh, of groups. Um, we ship a few of interesting features, uh, but also we did not ship uh, everything that we planned. From things that we sh that we like improved crazy from 9.1, something that we tried with 9.1 uh as something new uh is the cicd pipeline schedule uh cicd schedule got a major recall uh, also from backend and from the front end perspective it could basically be considered like a new feature uh with 9.1 we actually give ourselves a chance to ship something fast uh give an access uh, and actually break that uh, later but the truth is that we didn't break anything we just improve uh, this feature uh, in like major way. Uh, we also like ship a few of very important performance uh, improvements that actually uh, have quite significant benefit right now, um, but the, the more will be visible once we finish everything else that we have planned in our agenda. And we actually continued our uh, work on making a GitLab as real time as possible. But well, uh, we had plans for much more. Uh, we are always very ambitious in what we want to deliver. We want to move fast and we want to ship as many as possible. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't manage to ship the direction features, which is like the biggest low light of uh, CICD team 9.2, uh, because it's from like our perspective, direction is. Uh, Equality are even more important uh, than everything else that we are working on because it actually pushes our product forward. Mm, it did happen from like various reasons. One of the reasons is just a number of things that we had to fix in 9.2. If you see at the previous slide, we had like 36 closed issues out of which uh, 28 were bugs and regressions. It's like basically half of the issues were uh, like things that you have to fix. Uh, actually, it's not really true to say that uh, every issue is like of equal weight, but it also shows a little of the story of complexity and uh, the, the scope of what we are covering uh, with our changes. Uh, we also had like uh, things that kind of unexpected, like uh, when we had mixed people availability during the release, if uh, I actually I had to take a few times, few days off, Zegos also did took some time off. Mm, it was like something not really planned, but if we like take 30% of the CI CD team capacity, for some time it just takes a, a crazy amount of difference. But this is not only low light, the other low lights is we are still facing the CI outages. Mm, this is something that we are very uh, that we are constantly working on. A little more about uh, this part of that story uh, a little later. But maybe before that, let's talk about a little about 9.3. Uh, actually, sorry, there is 9.2, but it should be 9.3 uh, at the top. We have still like 51 issues open, out of which 20 are bugs, uh, 60 are closed so far. Uh, and there are some something like eight are the bugs, and we are just crazy ambitious. We are working on so many new things, and it's really like when I started building that list today, I, I didn't like realize that this is how many things we actually have in our uh, pipeline for 9.3. And this is like crazy amount of direction features with the uh, guest help from Dimitri who is working on code climate. Thank you, Dimitri, for doing that. Uh, and also we have like a crazy amount of the new features that just uh, built on top of what we have now and improve these like these small tiny things of CI CD that makes it even more awesome. Like we are getting us about pipelines usage quota for, uh, per, for users. We are getting asked for CI environment URL, so just make it easier to script. We are getting asked for aliases for 
uh, GitLab CI.yaml and Docker integration. This is something like eight or 10 months uh, long feature requests. Uh, we are actually also pushing envelope of like security uh, of the CICD with introducing concept of protected variables. But as always, we are also pushing uh, real time stuff. Uh, we are uh, we actually pretty much have finished environments list to be real time. We are working on improving our job details page to not refresh, which is like something that most most of time works, but sometimes it does not, and it just gives you a bad impression of how the product is behaving. Uh, we are actually pushing a lot of in terms of scalability and performance. Uh, unfortunately, object storage is like the follow up, and Persistence is a follow up from 9.2, something that we didn't ship. Uh, but we plan to finish that now and also pushing uh, things that are requested by support uh, team. Uh, a little more about CI on gitlab.com. I did mention that we had in low rise that we had like uh, CI outages and we had some time ago a very constructive discussion with uh, Ernst, Pablo and Stan about what we could do better to actually make it uh, more production ready, basically. And what we did came up is just uh, nominating a person within the team to be this kind of like a single point of uh, being reliability specialist. Uh, Tomasz work, uh, Tomasz is currently a developer who is, who is maintainer of GitLab Runner, but actually the Tomasz work will uh, change slightly to be more focused on production readiness of uh, GitLab CI, GitLab Runner, and GitLab. So everything that he will be doing will be focusing on making sure that CI on GitLab.com is always working and building all features that actually makes it possible for us to scale uh, significantly over what we see now and scale that with keeping in mind uh, limitations of our product. So. Thomas will be like the this something that is actually happening for some time, but it's but it's not really like well uh, described uh, in like a written communication. But Thomas is doing like a lot of work in production already, uh, and right now he will like be focused completely on uh, making mo most of uh, CI on GitLab.com to make sure that it's always stable uh, that we can scale. Uh, that is also cost efficient, something that uh, I know that we could greatly improve. If we like continue this topic, um, see on github.com, uh, with that comes a lot of responsibilities, uh, but also like more rigid planning of what we want to uh, deliver. For example, uh, this is a little mix, uh, a mix of things that uh, we are actually resolving and that we resolved, uh, but also a, a mix of things that we uh, are trying to resolve in upcoming weeks and months. For example, uh, we have like a step plan what we want to achieve with our changes to actually at least to some extent consider that CI is in much better shape on GitLab.com than it is now. Something that is actually very crucial because we started offering shared runners minutes on gitlab.com. So we're actually selling CI on gitlab.com right now as part of our bronze uh, plans and silver and gold plans. And people are just asking us about uh, these features, about improvements, but also about the stability because they do expect much more from us right now uh, than they were expecting when the service was free. And Thomas' work will be basically focused on making sure uh, that we can fulfill this uh, goal of CI production readiness with the steps, uh, at least these steps outlined uh, today. Uh, one of the like these changes that uh, brings us uh, closer to achieving this goal is like pushing envelope of monitoring. And we are doing that like every week, uh, it's really interesting because, for example, recently we had Zigerian who was contributing to GitLab Monitor and adding new graphs. Uh, we also have Tomasz who is, uh, of course, working on that. But 
with like better monitoring, we can we actually build better alerting that allow us to react much faster to problems. And recently, we actually like uh, being more responsive to infrastructure outages than infrastructure provider itself because we just know that before them, which is like very interesting uh, outcome. Um, one thing that is like uh, concerning me and our work um, is like the always this balance between uh, new features and maintenance costs of things that we are building. For example, I did take a look at the CI technical depth. We had maybe not like that crazy amount, but 38 open and 34 closed issues with the technical depth. But it still is uh, like, like show us amount of the things that we have to improve to actually say that uh, CI performance, CI scalability, CI reliability um, is something that um, is up to our expectations, basically. But there is another uh, concern, something that we started discussing when we basically started working on Pelsy Stages in database. Um, this is like one of these uh, big architectural changes to how like we store data right now. And just because of the amount of data that we have today, it is already quite complicated to uh, make this architectural change without uh, interruption and make sure that everything is like continuing to work on GitLab.com. Um, but it also brings us to a point how the world will look like in a half year from now or one year from now when we have like 10, 20, 100 uh, times more data than it, is than it is today. And this is something that we are trying like to mm, figure out now. Sorry for And this is what we are actually trying to figure out uh, based on this like quite complex topic uh, of uh, storing data and reconstructing them from what we have now to actually like understand um, how it can look uh, in the future when we start actually uh, migrating another sets of data that we see that would just greatly benefit for uh, system performance. Like another case is just migration of artifacts and traces. This is something that is actually also have significant uh, impact of uh, project deletion, something that is already asking for some time and something that we have some ideas um, what how to actually achieve that. Um, but this is actually part of the bigger story because it's like another problem that we have today and that we just only get bigger uh, over the time. Uh, as the hiring, mm, it's actually very interesting because we are in like the final phase of hiring one uh, CICD uh, engineer to the team. Uh, we are actually like waiting for a uh, resolution on how the contract should be done. Uh, it could take some time, uh, but actually we have uh, a few other people in the pipeline uh, that we are constantly reviewing and some of them are actually very interesting. I think that that's it, that's it from me. Uh, maybe anyone do have any questions? Okay, I am not seeing anything. I'm not hearing anything. Ben is asking what else do we want to monitor? Uh, I believe that everything. I think that we are getting to the place where that we will monitor everything. Uh, just to like be overhand with number of data and then actually try to figure out what is uh, in important in terms of alerting. Yes, Ben, I, I think that we are heading to the point that we probably need a dedicated CI, dedicated community server for CI. This is also something that is uh, discussed in uh, steps for CI, for CI production readiness. 
So the question is, how much can Prometheus handle? Uh, well, that depends. Um, uh, of course, it depends on how big a server you have. Uh, we've got reasonably good sized servers now. Second, oh, and, and, and of course, I have to two factor to get into the Prometheus server to see the metrics. Where's my two factor box? Um, okay, may, may, maybe one thing to like mention what we want to monitor. We basically want to monitor every job run that is being executed on CI runners. So basically we are looking at having like scraping 1000 servers right now, uh, but it will just grow over the time. So it's, it's the problem of today, uh, but probably in like half year from now, it will be the magnitude of more data. Camille, why does, uh, why does Ben have to go for his uh, two-factor? Aren't we trying to move everything to public servers? I'm not sure if I understand the question, sorry. Shouldn't all of our monitoring Prometheus servers have open public views? Uh, I think that not all we like disclose to public, but most of that. Uh, and I believe that Pablo would be better to answer that question. As far as I know, we don't put the Prometheus servers directly on the internet publicly uh, because there's potential for abuse because there's uh, we don't have a way to disable writable endpoints yet. Um, we're working on that for the 2.0 release. Um, uh, uh, so you're logging into the Prometheus server and not the Grafana views correct. of the Prometheus server. Okay, right. and that's being worked on so that we can do that in the future. Okay, makes yeah. sense. It's also, it's also difficult on the Prometheus server side to limit how long and how expensive queries can be, which can cause basically DDoS against the server. Okay, so, so in the history of GitLab, a lot of talk has gone into DDoS, and the only, <laughs> the only DDoSes were like, there was never, uh, never in the history of GitLab was there a malicious DDoS. I'm not saying there will never be, will be one, but we'll, we'll take, we'll take your chances. Uh, well, all the problems have been like self-inflicted or, or yeah, sheer incompetence. Um, yeah. And, and well, I think that's- Specifically, I'm looking at the, uh, so we, we, we have it set up so that we have redundancy between the public facing Prometheus and, and the internal facing Prometheus. So that's no problem. Uh, but there, there's no way to limit query time uh, and things on a, on, a, on a public Prometheus server. So it can, it can get annoyingly, it can get annoyingly dangerous, which is why we put Grafana in front of it because it has a little better limitations. Cool. Yeah. The, the, the and, ultimate and solution we actually, we actually would... did have Prometheus outage problems when, uh, when the database outage happened because there were too many people viewing our Grafana. Yeah, that, that can happen. Hmm. Yeah, it would be great to have like a public and a private one, but have exactly the same data on both of them so that they're like yeah. automatically mirrored. No, it, it, it'd be great to, to have a, a, a fully accessible public Prometheus. Um, uh, but if we talk about how much stuff we're monitoring, um, uh, we have we're doing about 20,000 samples per second into the, into the current Prometheus server. Um, and if we look at the memory usage. Just from the top of my head. Like, we've got about 300,000 300, um, uh, 300,000 metrics in the Prometheus server right now, which is actually not that much. Uh, but if we want to go and monitor all of the runner uh, nodes, we want to get node exporter metrics from every single runner in the, uh, if you're talking about a thousand runner servers, that's, that's going to push the limit of, of the production server. And we should probably have a separate one for that because we want to do, um, uh, we want to do, no more than about a million metrics on a single Prometheus server, uh, especially given that our cloud nodes are a little smaller than a dedicated hardware nodes. 
Ah, oh, so the CI needs all the runs. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's cool. And that's uh, so. Actually, do we do we we can do one million metrics per se per second per server? Uh, we can. Pro uh, we probably do uh, a, a million different time series at a rate of about a hundred thousand samples per second. Okay, so the so the the base one can still grow by a factor of five. Yes. Uh, we started to run into problems uh, when we had some excessive amount of metrics. Um, the Azure VM that we're on, the VM class we're on is, is medium sized or medium large sized. I forget what they, what they call sizes these days. Um, but I'd say we have like three to five X headroom right now. Thanks for the presentation, uh, Camille. I thought it was really, uh, really interesting, and I think we're we're, we're seeing great progress in, in stability. And I'm super excited for all the features that will come out in the, the next release. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. See you on Team Bye. Pro.